been through it before. Life porch, right? <coughs> okay. So we're gonna call a little bit of an auto. So um, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna go through what we did yesterday, because I believe when I start to talk about this house that I call quarterback, okay, the first part of the, the presentation is the foundation where you lay the concrete before you put the walls and the roof, the windows, the lights, the heat, okay? So that's what I really believe in because if you don't have a, a great fundamental base, okay, then you can't have great success. And I believe if you have a great fundamental uh, base, it will translate to any system okay, that you can play. Green tea, spread, under center, does not matter. Um, when I'm doing my camps, um, I have sometimes, most of the time, about 50 quarterbacks in, in a camp, okay? And I always talk to my quarterbacks, there aren't any bad questions, okay? There aren't any bad questions, just ask, just, hey, Coach Calhoun, I, I don't understand what you just, what you said, explain it to me again. Because I'm sure there's somebody else in that group that's thinking the same question, like, oh, damn, okay? So that brings me to, okay, when I asked yesterday, are there any questions? I was like, all right, cool. And I walked outside and five coaches, hey, coach, hey, what if we do a thing like this, right there, by step and rotate? I'm like, I'm sure somebody else in here wanted that same question asked, okay? Or answered, rather, okay? So for the first next couple of minutes before I get back into it, are there any questions, okay? You guys had time to think about what I talked about yesterday? Okay, hopefully you went home and said, damn, okay? I really would want to know in my system, how do we do this? Okay, so let me open that up real quick. Any questions at all? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. okay. Let's go Shoulder width apart, balls on the shelf, okay? I want to rotate to camera one, left shoulder's camera one, belly button's camera two, right shoulder's camera three, okay? So anytime you're not using legs that help you throw, the football's a bullet, your left hand's your trigger. You got a left-handed quarterback, okay? Football's a bullet, right-handed trigger, okay? I use the ter terminology of blocking the punch, okay? From here, blocking the punch, and then touching the wall, okay? I was shown some video from the quarterback from uh, George Dork, okay? He was, the coach was talking to me about, well, he has a problem when his arm comes here and the arm actually collapses the ball literally behind his head, okay? He said, well, how can I make that quicker, okay? But the first thing I saw in the video, okay, was the left hand and the left foot moved together, okay? So he did this. That's the first thing that I saw. So therefore, we cannot transfer power from your legs to your core out through your hands, okay? So again, the football is a bullet, okay, and you're using your legs to help you throw. You have to hit the trigger, okay? But the next thing I saw was this, okay? Like the old Al Bundy, like, hey, I scored five touchdowns in one game, right? Like this here, right? That's the first, that's the next thing I saw. The arm extends out here. So once this arm goes here, this shoulder can't move. So therefore, whatever the ball is doing back here, okay, it won't go faster that way because this is not moving. The only way this can come that way is if your shoulder moves, okay? I didn't even have to go to college and study anatomy and all the body parts because I know the left shoulder is connected to my right shoulder. Simple, okay? So going from, from base, balls in the shelf to rotate. Once you block the punch with the back of the forearm here, you want to touch the wall. And as I think about touching the wall, it's gonna bring my other shoulder through. We go bicep to ear, lift, and then extend all the way out, okay? Reach out and try to touch your target. Reach out and try to touch your target. And you don't pull your arm down, let gravity do it, okay? So that's where we start going from, from uh, base, okay? So, real quick before I even go on, <laughs> we talked about how do you correct, okay, for example, quarterback doing this, Okay? And you're going, no, block the punch. Block the punch, block the punch. And he's like, he just doesn't get it. Okay? So uh, let me borrow you, Chris. Uh, 
So one of the, I know the problem, what's the solution? How, how do I get them to do that, right? So if Chris, trigger and blocking the punch. Okay, so I'm going to be standing. Okay, that's Chris. That's Steve. And I'm Chris. I mean, yeah, tell about it. So, the first part, I'm going to stand off his left shoulder. Okay, and I said, I want you to hit the trigger, and then with the back of your left hand, I want you to touch the palm of my right hand. Okay, so would it be like this? Okay, and that's how quick it'll be. Trigger pull. Okay. So that would get the initial part of the left. Okay, so now you're going to do this. Okay, you're going to do this. Okay, so then I will move to the middle. So the next part, I will be, okay, the next transition, I have them do that for five reps. Okay, because again, we're trying to create muscle memory. Okay, hey, so now, hey, this is like my secret, secret stuff. So you can't, you can't tell anybody. Okay, so the next movement, I will, or the next sequence of it, I will be in the middle of his back. My right hand's in the middle of his back. Okay? And have to do the same thing. So I'm stepping, pulling, okay? So I'm mad, but look at my shoulder. As I'm stepping and pulling around, it forces the shoulder to move. Okay? And then I'm gonna be off his right shoulder, okay? And I have to force him to rotate even more. Look where my camera three is. It's there. Okay, so after we wrap that, five off the left shoulder, five off the middle of the back, five off the right shoulder, you're gonna stay there. Okay? Now I'm going to say, hey, put a football in your hand. So after we wrap that, okay, five here, five middle, five, okay, I say, hey, put a football in your hand, step and throw in the ball, but visualize me standing behind you with my hand up. And with your left hand, okay, block the punch and touch the ball. Okay? So the first time they actually throw the ball, okay, if they're trying to throw it straight, the ball's going to go this way. Okay? Because the right arm is not used to getting to the release point so fast. Okay, so they're gonna do like this. Oh, shh. Okay? Because the shoulders are clearing faster. Okay? So, you just tell them. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. If you miss a throw, no problem. Okay? But you have to create the muscle memory. GPS or our navigation, okay? And when we step to hit the trigger, we have to take an L step, okay? So it's the back leg, okay, that pushes your front leg to hit the trigger, okay? It's the back leg that pushes, okay? So the whole time your upper body's throwing the football as it's rotating, okay? Once you hit trigger, okay, you have to continue to push weight to your front foot, okay? Because you want to finish 90 on the front, 10 on the back, 90, 10. Okay, so the whole time your upper body's throwing the ball, you have to continue to push weight, okay? Because all the energy is coming through legs, core, out through your hands, okay? So we talked about the sequence, okay? The first part of the sequence, hit the trigger with your GPS, block the punch, touch the wall, lift and extend, okay? So I have a good friend of mine named John Booty, okay? And his two sons, Josh Booty, and John David Booty, okay? Josh played at LSU, played for Cleveland Browns, okay? His other son, John David, played at USC and played for the Minnesota Vikings, okay? So his dad knows what the hell he's doing as far as how to develop a quarterback. So the one thing he came out, and so now I'm able to work with his grandson, okay? So he came out, and I'm telling his grandson, his name is General. General, well, damn, man, how's your wife let you get away naming your son General? That's pretty damn cool, right? He has a lot to live up to, right? Hey, Captain, Lieutenant, right? So, so I'm talking to General about, hey, go buy something here, buy something here, 
okay? And his grandfather, John says, okay, hey, General, um, you know the term I talk about putting a spike in the tree, okay? So John used to tell his boys and his grandson, if you have a spike in your hand, put it in the tree as high as possible. And I said, shit, that's why I said the ear. Okay, so as soon as he said that, General got the movement right away. I didn't have to keep trying to stress, but no, why is it here? Why is it here? I said, hey, put the spike in the tree. He knew exactly the movement. Boom. Okay? So now with General, he understands that terminology. Okay? But with my other quarterbacks, they wouldn't know what I'm talking about. Okay? So you have to use words that they can relate to, whether it's hockey stick or baseball, basketball, whatever sport, if you understand what they have a little bit of a background in, you can use different words from other sports to help them get the movement of it. Okay? You see that? There you go. Perfect. Okay? So, to dial in your sequence, to get the muscle memory of the sequence, okay? We're going to have our quarterbacks walk into their throw. So they start square, step with the right foot, that's your shoulders closed. I don't want them to push into their throw, I just want them to step. Okay? Because I really want to focus on, okay, that they hit the trigger before the hands split away from the ball. Okay, that's the important part. Because you lose velocity, you lose energy when the left hand and the left foot move together. Okay? So, as you're walking to your throw, turn, trigger, block the punch, okay? Touch the wall, lift, extend. Okay? <coughs> the wrist speed, it's the wrist speed, okay? That's really, really important that allows the ball to spin tight. Okay? So, we talked about, we saw some of the quarterbacks yesterday, okay? When they threw the ball, the ball lost altitude. Okay, like coming down, the airplane coming down landing. Okay, so that tells me that the arm is going down. Okay, so again, you're going, damn, no, extend. It tells you to extend. Okay, we know the problem. What's the damn solution? Okay, so again, so I have my quarterbacks do what they call it. Okay, lift, extend, and hold. Lift, extend, hold. Okay, so we'll start at base, ball's going to the shelf, we'll rotate to camera one. I want them to throw the ball, okay, extend their arm out, and be able to hold their finish eye level, directly out in front of them, okay? So if your arm's extending that way, they should be able to hold their finish here, just like this. And if they cannot do it, okay, if the right arm has been doing this the whole time, you can see it right there, okay? So that's how you start to create the muscle memory. So I have them go five throws here, <clears throat> hold the finish, eye level. I actually would have to move my head to see my target, okay? So after we go five throws, we're trying to extend and hold. So even if they're coming here, they can see, okay, damn, my arm's coming down, okay? So in the very next repetition, I'm gonna tell them, hey, 1% back, which would be here, okay? So they go again, okay? All right, let's try to get 1% back, okay? So after the five throws, I want them to put the whole throw together, okay? Extend your arm, once you let the ball go, let gravity pull your arm down. So the next five throws will be here. Okay? And you can see it in the football. Okay? Arm goes straight, ball goes straight. Okay? So then the next pro progression from that is throwing the ball from platform. Okay? Trigger, block the punch, touch the wall, lift, extend, hold. So they're here, hit this one. Okay? And they're trying to hold their finish. Okay? And they create the muscle memory. <coughs> arm extend. Okay? So you go five there, and then you throw five breakers. And you would know when they're doing the five regular throws if they're actually extending out based on what the ball's doing. The ball goes low, he's still doing this. Okay? If the ball's coming across, he's coming here. The ball follows your home. Okay? I'm not teaching Japanese. It's not that hard. Okay? I promise. Okay? So, those are some of the things on, damn, okay, I see the problem. How do you fix it? Okay? So I just kind of came up with stuff like, damn, how can I, I'm always trying to think out of the box. Think out of the box. How, do you, how can I get my quarterback to do the movement okay, that I want him to do? Okay? Whatever it is, just think. Just think. Think outside the box. Come up with a drill. Okay? And that's how I came up with my stuff. Okay? But I have never told anybody okay, about the extend and hold okay, or nobody. Okay? And I've had my company out for 12 years. Okay? Because like those are the things, those are the little information that allows me to be that much better than everybody else out there doing it. 
That's what I truly believe. And I never told anybody. See, I ain't gonna feel hell. I'm in Germany. No one over there. You guys didn't call me. Hey, George Whitfield, man. Coach Cat, who told me this? Don't tell my, any of my competitors. Okay? Oh, we got a question. Oh, yes. Right, so his question was, he's been coaching quarterback and his arm's been coming down, and now all of a sudden this year, he's throwing and stopping his arm. Okay? How do I, how do you correct that? Right? You just have to okay, say, hey. So I would tell him, okay, I want your thumb and your index finger, okay, to make a C on your right thigh. Okay? So if you snap your wrist, okay, to only your arm there, you should feel your thumb and your index finger hit your right thigh after you throw the ball. Okay? So he goes on. And now he's not leaving his arm up there. It's something simple like that. Like, you know, how can I get him like, touch the ground or point at the ground? Something really simple, okay, that he can understand and go, all right, coach, that's easy. Got it. Okay? So, one of the other things, okay, talking about problem, problem solving. I get <coughs> coaches call me, okay, for example, um, uh, the quarterback coach from LSU. His name is Cam Cameron. He, well, he's not there anymore, he got fired with less mouse. So Cam Cameron called me up a couple years ago and he said, hey, um, I have all these tall quarterbacks, okay? They're six, seven, six, six, and the problem I have with them is that they lock out their front knee, okay? They're stepping here and they lock their knee out, okay? So you can see where my weight is, it's back, okay? So they start missing high and they can't get up over their front foot. How do you fix it? Okay, how do you fix a quarterback that locks his knee out? Okay, so I'm like, yeah, all right. So the, the drill that I do is called L step from split. Okay, so I would have the quarterback start his delivery where he would if he had just hit the trigger. Okay, so if he just did this, that's the first part of your throw. Okay, so I have him start in their perfect L step. Okay, from here. I have them sink their hips. They're still balanced 50 50. The first thing they have to do, okay, is push weight. To the front foot. Okay, so I don't even talk about the upper body yet. Okay? I said just push weight to your front foot, okay, and your left knee naturally locks out. Naturally does. Okay? So again, you're teaching muscle memory. So you start here, okay? Again, we're just focusing, okay, with the lower body. And I always talk about your right foot, your right foot has to stay connected to earth. It has to stay down on the ground. I don't want the right foot coming off the ground. Okay? I see coaches go, hey, pick it up and stick it in the ground. Right? And I said, when your right foot is in the air, how much balance do you actually have? If we all agree that balance creates accuracy, how much balance do you actually have? Unless you've been doing ballet your whole life, <coughs> you're probably good. Okay, but I have it, so I want to be balanced. So I always talk about having the right leg stay connected to earth. Okay? So from the L. Okay, so now the second part of that. So now they understand how to push weight to their front foot. Okay, and it's, the, it's important that the left leg, okay, understands how much energy is being transferred to it, okay, and it knows how to grab the energy and balance you up. Okay, so that's what you're forcing the left leg to do, okay, to catch all the energy. Catch the energy, balance you up. Okay, so the second part of that is a split second after you push, start your delivery, okay, which would be block the punch, touch the wall. Lift and extend. Okay? So they'll start here, they'll push, split second later, this way. Okay? And then they will understand how much energy, how much weight is actually coming to their front foot. And they have to learn how to control it. So that comes back to <coughs> jump and roll, ankle stability. Okay? If they don't have ankle stability, they're always going to be off balance when they're trying to transfer the weight. Okay? So that's what I teach. Okay? As far as teaching quarterbacks uh, how not to lock the knee out. So after we do this, 10 throws, I say, okay, get the platform and step and throw me the ball. Okay? So they should be here, step, throw, boom, and the ball comes out. They should be able to do the movement. They should be able to do the movement because we, cre uh, we created the muscle memory. 
Okay, so after you break it down and have them do the specific fix, okay, then have them throw the ball regular and apply the information that they just worked on. Okay, and that's how you problem solve. Okay, so after we go through our sequence, okay, again, after we work the sequence, we just have them step and throw, being able to put those three things into motion. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so from there, we're going to work our gather steps. Okay, we're not looking to get depth, we're just looking to gather up and get the ball out. Okay, so from platform, from platform, you want to bring your left calf across your right shin. Okay, and that will force okay, the feet to come back even here. Because this is where you throw your best ball from. So if my left calf comes across my right shin, it forces the right foot to come right back. Okay, if you don't do that, your feet will end up staggered like this. Okay, and then you once you take your normal, so if my feet are staggered here, and I take my normal L step, that's not an L, it's a T. Okay, because the heel, my left heel is to the tip of my toe, and not to my right heel, which forces the body to throw around your front leg. Okay, and then you start to get the hip to swing, okay, and you start to get the arm to move across the body. Okay, so we work the gather steps, nice rhythm, okay, and I always clap that rhythm. So they can, okay, because you can hear when they do it, okay, when they're going uh, on the grass or a turf, you can hear the feet hit the ground. Okay, if it doesn't sound like that, it's too big. Okay, it's too big. Okay, so from there we go gather steps and then we go gather hitch. Everything, like we talked about yesterday, everything is a transition, everything is a progression. Okay, I don't do, uh, um, Walking into the throw before I throw from base. Okay? So everything is a progression. So once we go gather hitch, some of the culture points we talked about is making sure the shoulder plane stays level. Okay? So when you gather, you should gather the platform. Okay? And so it's left, right, right, left. Okay? Left, right to gather, and right, left. Okay? Some quarterbacks I see, they say, Coach, I'm hitching up. And they're physically hitching up like this. Up. Now, there's no energy going this way. Okay? So I said, no, you got to get the hips go this direction. It's here. Okay? That's how you create energy towards the target. So we say hitch up, not up, but out. Okay? So we're going to gather hitch to your left. And again, when you're throwing to your left or to your right, your eyes precede your throw. If you don't see it, you don't throw it. You never throw the football blind, okay? Because you throw enough interceptions, you'll be standing next to the coach and not asking you in the game, okay? So when I go and gather hitch to my left, right when your left leg starts to cross over, the eyes got to locate your target. So it'll be this. Back to platform. Got the hitch and throw, okay? Same thing to my right. Here. <coughs> and then I go. Gather hitch. I'll rep that, okay? And then we go from that. To the class room, okay? If you have a line where that would cut them in half, that's great. If you don't, that's okay. Just have them straddle, okay? Or open the base up, be at platform, but the eyes are down the field towards you. I want their feet to be completely quiet, okay? Completely quiet, okay? Because I want them to understand when you start to move and that defensive end contains you, you actually got to get your feet quiet again before you flip your hips, okay? So again, I want things to translate, okay? So we're from clock to the clock over here, falls on the shelf, I just throw the target, I clap, they flip their hips, both feet hit the ground at the same time. The quicker you can get the platform, the quicker you can get the ball out. Okay, so from here, it's this. And always understand, that's a long movement, okay? So if you don't allow your feet to set, you're gonna throw the ball off balance, okay? And I never want them to throw the ball off balance unless we're working an off-balance drill, which I try not to, I'll do 2% of that, okay? I don't want to teach bad habits. I believe if you're throwing off-balance, the quarterback that's playing should be a good enough athlete to throw off-balance. I ain't gonna practice that. I ain't gonna practice him. I just don't believe it, okay? I want to practice great habits, okay? And if he feels pressure and he has to throw off his back foot, that, this guy at this position should be athletic enough to do it. Okay, so we go clock drill, and then we have actually have. Oh, this thing got a video, so don't go out. Um, 
We actually have, where they're moving, where they're spreading. Okay, so I have two cones, probably maybe 12 yards apart, okay? One cone's here, one cone's there. I'm on that other cone, and I tell them, as you're spreading across, okay, anywhere between this cone and that cone, I'm gonna clap to simulate the defensive end, okay? And I tell them, don't guess what I'm gonna clap, just react. Okay? Because everything is a reaction as far as when they blitz and how you see things. Okay? So they're spreading across, I clap, they gather up, stop the feet, flip the hips, ball comes out. Okay? And it's the same thing the opposite way. Okay? They're spreading this way, but the key thing, okay, I get guys to do it just like this all the time. Ready? I'm ready, coach. I'm over there now, right? All right, ready? I'm like, you ready? Coach, I'm ready. And they start to spread. And I'm like, only thing on the sideline is parents, <coughs> Gatorade, cheerleaders, okay? Unless that's more interesting, instead of the 11 guys that's trying to make you have a bad day, okay? Then continue to look over here, okay? So always have your eyes down the field, okay? So spread the clock, got her up, set, ball's coming out, okay? So that's when we're sprinting into the classroom, okay? Okay, from there, we transition, get the clock drill to the line drops. Okay, so once I get the first, when I first get the quarterback, I just want them to start at platform. Okay, so if I'm standing here, okay, I want them to start here at platform. Okay, so maybe the second, maybe the third time with me, okay, then I'm going to actually have them start under center. Okay, and put put it into motion. We talked about how we open up on the clock. Okay, so when you're talking about when you're dropping. If 12 is in front of you, 6 is behind you, and you're in the middle of the clock, okay, as you can see my great drawing over here, okay, I want them to open to 5 o'clock. Try to put your right foot at 5. If you have a left-handed quarterback, try to put their left foot at 7. And their momentum, their momentum of that energy will bring them to 6, okay? And then they'll be able to drop straight back, and now your center and your rest of your guards and tackles they understand where the quarterback is and where to protect, okay? But if you do what I call stepping in the bucket, if you open straight to six, momentum takes you to seven, you end up dropping and setting up behind your guard or your left tackle, okay, and shortening the edge for that defensive end, okay? And so then the tackle gives up the sack because if this is my left tackle and I'm setting up here, okay, and he's shortening the edge, okay, and everybody's going, God, that left tackle sucks. What the hell? Get him out of there. He can't block. And it's actually the damn quarterback's fault. It's his fault because he's not in the middle of the pocket behind the center. Okay? So, from there, we start in the center, open five and six, and then we start our drop. Okay? I call them scissors. If this is my left calf, this is my right shin, I want my legs to do like this. Smooth. Rhythm. Okay? And I tell them, cut grass with your feet. Cut grass with your feet. Because the closer we can keep our feet to the ground, the quicker we can set them and get the ball out. So not only are we working on our drop, we're working on throwing hot. If the wheel, the mic, the sand blitzes, okay, we have to be able to gather up and get the ball out. And like I mentioned yesterday, okay, if your quarterback is late with the ball, okay, and you tell him, get it out quicker, anticipate, get it out quicker, okay, we're not talking to his arm, we're talking to his feet, okay, he has to hit trigger even to get the bullet to go. Okay, you even start to deliver. Okay? So we'll drop righty, okay, and then we'll drop like a left-handed quarterback. Even though we're dropping like a left-handed quarterback, the ball still is on your right side here. Okay? And the important thing about when you drop and doing the line drops is your shoulders have to stay parallel. Okay, so you can keep your full field vision. Okay? And the only way the shoulders can stay here is if my toes are pointing this way. Because your upper body wants to stay in front of your feet. Okay? So when you start to drop, if your toes have to start, start to do this, your upper body is going to follow. And so now you're running back instead of dropping back. Okay? So we do the line drills. Okay? And then from there, we'll transition to open trigger step. So when I'm setting up my workout, I want to, I want to drill where they're, I'm going to get them winded, I'm going to get them tied. Okay? And then I'm going to do a drill where they have, they're going to do something uh, with less movement, okay? So they still have to control the ball when they're tired, okay? So the core never, ever fatigues. It never gets tired, 
Okay? It keeps the upper half and the lower half upright. Okay? So if they start to get tired, I tell them to rotate more, rotate harder. Okay? Go out the punch grip. Here, create the torque. The torque. Okay? I'm going to snap. I said snap your shoulders. Okay? So from that, so the line drops, then we're going to that open trigger step, which we're isolating the last turn and throw of your three on time or your five on time. Okay, so I have them set up. I throw them to my left. The right foot is posted. Okay, so the right foot would be here, this way. And I say the logo on the inside of your shoe should already be pointing to your target. Okay, the first thing, so when I'm turning the throw to my left, since my eyes go first, it's almost like my chin is opening my shoulder for me because I'm looking first. Okay, and we're talking about throwing the ball down the hallway. Throw it down the hallway. So that's going to force the shoulders to actually stop here and then they continue, okay? So they should stop here and then you start to deliver. And I said the trigger that makes that bullet move is in the hallway, okay? Because right-handed quarterbacks have a tendency, okay, to turn and throw at the same time, okay? Because it's the easy side, you naturally create momentum that way and you'll end up coming across your body, okay? So then you turn, stop, and then push, okay? So once, so the drill would be open trigger step, and then gather step, okay? And then we talk about again, throwing around the clock, okay? So if I'm the quarterback here, close in front of me, okay? Three would be out here, okay? So if I'm throwing the three, or just to the left of three, okay, in between, if I'm in here between two and three, I want to post my foot there, throw my eyes down the field, there's a hallway that I have to get to, okay? So I'm gonna get the quarterback to, be able to understand how to throw in different angles, okay? Because you just don't throw straight the whole day. So I want to turn, get there, get in the whole way, hit trigger, okay? And then I want to gather to it. Yes, sir? How, how would you um, go about getting the quarterback to remain uh, relaxed when going through all of this? Because a lot of times it's uh, that they get panicked. And trying, trying to think about all of this at one time, yes, yeah, repetition, but when, when you have a linebacker uh, standing in your face, it's a little bit hard to, to remain relaxed in order to go through this. Okay, good question. So, like I said yesterday, when you have rep this, okay, rep it and rep it and rep it, you don't have to build yourself a mental checklist, okay, of anything to think about, because your body's on autopilot now. So now your mind is free to see the linebacker, safety, rotate, cornerback blitzes, okay? And if you got somebody that's just going back to a panic, that's not your quarterback. That's the simple answer to that. Okay, somebody might go, mm -hmm. okay? That's not your guy, okay? You wanna choose a quarterback that's gonna be able to go, okay, I see this guy coming about to blow me up and I'm about to step and throw right into it, okay? So speaking of that, translating into that, are there any more questions real quick? Can you answer? Okay, so speaking of that, if there's a, a defender running at you, okay? You cannot, okay, take a full stride step, okay, and get blown up. Okay, so I'm gonna have them take a short step or a no step, okay? Short step, no step, okay? So the way I would do that is I have them start with their feet patting like this, okay? And when I say ball, okay, and I have them about their, their toe, okay, or their left foot would be about maybe an inch, to an inch and a half behind, okay, the, the yard line, okay? And I would tell them, I don't want your left foot that your toes to go past the line, it can be on the line or short of the line, okay? So I have them pat the feet. When I say ball, it's this. It's quick, okay? Short step, no step. So since they're not able to use their legs, okay, they have to generate energy with their core to keep this consistent velocity on the ball, okay? Because nobody's gonna have this linebacker blitz an A-gap in like this and just get blasted, okay? So you just wanna take a short step, no step. Okay, so I have them go straight, pat the feet, okay? And after they throw, okay, I want them to check and see. I want them to see, I want them to see what I'm seeing, okay? And then I have them do it to the left. Short step, no step. So they're here, okay, when I say ball, it's this, okay? Boom, the ball comes out, okay? So it shouldn't be past the line. So again, that's teaching things you're gonna be doing in the game, okay? You're always trying to create a drill that's gonna translate into the game, okay? So. Yes. I have a question. Sure. Do you have a special prospect for screens or do you use the same technique? 
I want to use the same technique. That, but you know, what's great about talking about screens is um, it's not coached very well. Okay? So, for example, right? Let's say I'm in gun. I'm in gun. Okay? And I'm going to do a regular three with a hitch, and I'm going to throw a curl route down the field. I'm going to do like this. Okay? And go down the field. Right? So the whole first quarter, I'm here, showing the pocket. Okay? And then I run a screen, and they do like this. And they never set up really hard. Okay? And so <coughs> the defense break, defense coordinator, the DLI coach, and say, if they don't set hard, it's a screen. So as you come up field, they don't set hard, stop and start backtracking because there's just okay? And that's what you see. So it has to look the exact same. Okay? You have to be able to set hard and then start to dip ground and throw screen. Because if you don't set hard and you've been doing it, okay, the first part of the game, set your hard in the pocket here, okay, and then all of a sudden you start drifting and really don't set your feet, boom, it's a telltale sign that it's a screen. Okay? Any more questions? Okay. I'm, I'm figuring it out. Okay, yeah, no worries. Okay, so, um, who's the defensive coordinator again? Yeah, tell me your name, please. My name? Yes. Billy. Okay. What do you have your free safety? How do you coach your free safety? Okay, to understand, or let me, let me rephrase that. What do you have your safety? Look at the quarterback, what part of the body, to help them determine where the ball is going to be thrown. What would you tell your free safety? I told them uh, to watch the right arm. Watch the right arm. Watch the right arm. Watch the right arm. Okay. So, I was talking to a defense coordinator four years ago, and I asked him, I said, what do you have your free safety to look at on the quarterback to help them determine if they're throwing left, middle, or the right. And I say, hey, do you have them wash your eyes? And he said, no, no, no. You guys have gotten so great at looking us off, okay? He goes, I have them wash their front shoulder. And I said, oh, damn, they figured it out. Because it doesn't matter if I'm looking out here, I'm going to where my camera one starts, okay? So now that I got that information, I'm like, okay, all right, I'm on front shoulder. So I'm going to take that back to my quarterbacks and say, now when you want to look off a of safety, you have to look him off with your eyes and your camera one. Okay? So if we're running four vertical, okay, we got a one high safety, and I want to throw the ball to this number two receiver running up the seam, I'm going to drop like this. Here. And all I need that safety to do is see my eyes on my camera one, and he starts to weave off the eye, what I call the eyelid. And once he weaves off this island, he cannot get back to that seam in time. Okay? So when you talk about your quarterbacks looking guys off, tell them to keep their eyes and their camera one together. Okay? So if I want to throw this way or throw this way, I want to look here and then come back and go. Or I want to come here and then close the shoulder. Okay? Eyes and camera one stay together. Okay? Throwing on the run. Okay? So when you're throwing on the run, okay, we want to isolate the setup. Okay? I have my knees slightly bent. Okay, the right foot's in front if you're right-handed, the left foot's in front if you're left-handed. Okay? I want 90% of your weight on your front foot, 10 on the back. Okay? So it stays in the same theme. Okay? If you're not using the legs to help you throw, okay, if the football is the bullet, your left hand is your trigger. Okay? So as we set up here. We set up here, the first thing I want them to do is rotate to camera one. Okay? Because all their throws, when the ball okay, starts at camera one, whether you're in the pocket here or you're throwing the ball on the run, I always want your shoulders to start at camera one. Okay? And I'm like, I, I'm super, super detailed. Okay? So, I mean, if it's like this, I'm, I'm on him. Okay? That's not one. Okay? You want to start your camera one where your target is. Okay? So I will not let them get away with this, okay? I want it perfect, okay? So I'm having them rotate here, and then they can start to feel, okay, the core work. So they're setting up, rotate the one, left 
hands are triggered. I want him to throw, push off the right front foot, bring your left knee up and through to simulate the running motion, okay, and then step. So they throw and step. That's all I want. Just isolate that. Isolate that. Okay? And then you get him to do what it, that, the back pedal, the tap, ball drill. Okay? So coach is over there. I'm here. We're back pedaling. So TP would be back pedaling. Obviously, I tap. He hit him right forward. When I show him my hands, it doesn't mean throw, but it does mean load. Load for at least two or three steps to make sure the camera one's starting there, and then you throw the ball on the run. You put in the motion. Right? from what you just did from standstill, okay? Is there any other questions before I move on? Okay, all right, so. Go ahead. All right, so, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit. Um, of what I was going to be talking about later in the day. Talking about run mesh, okay? Run mesh. Okay. The, the one thing that's gotten um, quarterbacks have, have kind of lost of getting good at is being under center, being under center, and understanding how to create the great run mesh between your quarterback and your running back, okay? So, back to using that clock theory, okay? So, if the running back is directly behind you at six o'clock, and he's going through the two holes, so the running back's going through the two holes, which would be at my right leg, okay? So I just, let me explain first before I start drawing, because my heart skills are not great, okay? So, if the running back's going through the two hole, if I do like this here and open up this way, I call it the running the running back's train tracks, okay? Here's his train tracks. Okay? That's his pad to, to the two hole. So if I open up and stand here, okay, he's gonna run directly into me. Either he's gonna run into me, or I'm gonna force him to bounce to the next hole, which we're not blocking, okay? So I tell my quarterback, if the running back is going through the two hole, I want you to open up to six o'clock and hold the ball over the two hole, okay? And that's where, okay, the, the mess would happen, okay? So there's two that I teach as far as, okay, with one hand and two hand, okay? So with the one hand, when I'm, guys that are going to the NFL, they don't go with two hands, they don't ball fake with two hands, okay? They do what I call the claw, okay, a claw fake. So the first thing you have to do when you get the ball from the center, you have to seat the football, okay? You gotta pull it to your belt buckle, okay? So from here, it will be this, okay? Because as you're turning, if you have a football, a fullback, if it's out here, okay, as a fullback's coming through, it can get knocked out of your hand, okay? Or if a guard's pulling, it can get knocked out, okay? So when we do the claw, okay, you have to seat and then hang the ball with one hand, okay? So if you guys are my running backs, it would be like this here. See? And hand. And I want the other hand to stay in. Okay? So, so we want to be open to six. The running back's going through the two hole. There's the match. Okay? So if the running back's going through the four hole, there's his train tracks. The running back's going through the four hole. Okay? I tell the quarterback to go to five o'clock. Okay, so if he goes to five, see, hand. That's the only thing about going to five, okay? And there the mess would be between the running back and the quarterback, and I'm not on his train tracks, okay? If the running back's going through the six hole, the quarterback has to open to four o'clock, okay? Same thing on the opposite side of the clock, okay? He's going through the one hole, I gotta open to six, here. He's going through the three hole, I gotta go to seven, okay? If he's going through the five hole, I gotta open okay, to eight. Does that all make sense? Okay. So therefore, you don't have the quarterback okay, in the hole like this, and then got to either pull back and get ready to, or force the running back to bounce. Okay. So that's the one thing. So we talk about the claw. That's with the one hand, and then the next one I teach is two to one. Start the ball with two hands. 
Okay, finish with one. I call it playing the guitar. Okay, so if I run the match behind me and he's going through the two hole, I'm gonna see here, hang the ball here with two hands. Okay, once I get to the mesh point, I hand the ball off and I slide the right hand down my left arm and my eyes fall on my arm. This way. I ain't never played a guitar, but I know this is what it looks like, right? Okay, so as soon as I tell the quarterback, hey, play the guitar tonight. Right? Even if they never played one, everybody in here knows how okay, to play an air guitar. It'll be like this. Perfect. Okay? So, two to one, eyes full of arm. Okay? And even if you go play action, it has to look the same. Okay? So you have the ball in the right hand, slide the ball down the arm, put it here on your hip, and give it an empty hand. Okay? So what sells face, play action face, is the head and the hand. The head and the hand. Okay? It all has to look the same. Okay, so we go two to one, play the guitar, or we go with the claw. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about play action if you're going to use the claw. Okay, so if I'm going into the four hole, okay, and I'm going to go play action, it's important. Do we have a football in here? All right, we're in a football clinic and no footballs. <laughs> so, <laughs> if I'm going to the four hole and I'm going play action, okay, I, once I see and I hang, the laces of the ball should be this way. The laces should be pointing out this way. Okay, I'm holding the back side of the ball. The laces should be pointing this way because my hand, my hand is just like this. Okay, so once I get to the mesh point and I pull the ball here, I pull the laces right to my throwing hand this way. Okay, so now I got laces. I snap my head around, get to the top of my drop, and I'm ready to throw. Okay, so when I'm going to the right and we're doing the claw. Okay. The lace is already in my hand. I go see, and I point the nose of the ball. The nose of the ball is pointed at the running back's hip, and I already have the laces, so it's here. Okay, I get to the mesh point, I pull and curl. Okay, so those are the two things I believe in as far as when you're doing the claw. Okay, as far as the laces being out, if you're going to your left, and if you're going to your right, already having the hand on the football. Are we good? So, it's possible, okay? Talk a little bit about the boards, okay? Again, these are the best things, okay, that I found as far as helping my quarterbacks develop, okay? The step over bags is just not realistic to have your feet that high off the ground. Again, Gilman Sports, these are like $35 each, okay? You have to, and if you want, your kids to be great, you're going to have to invest. Yes? Just one question. Uh, what kind of material is that? Is it it's like a rubber. It's a foam rubber. It has a little bit of weight to it. Okay. Or the quarterback does not step on it. And then no, it won't flip. No. Okay. And it's only about an inch off the ground. So even if they step on it, it'll squish down so they don't roll their ankle. It's not like a hard piece of plastic. So they roll their ankle. And they can step on it. It'll it. Okay? So with the boards, you okay, create <laughs> With the boards, you can create whatever movement okay, you want to. Okay, whatever, if there's some of certain movement in your offense, create that drill. Okay, you, don't have, you don't have to do my drills. Create your own that fits your system. Okay? So with this one, he's going to be stepping over, stepping back. <coughs> So when they're shuffling, we talked about Tony Hawk, keeping their feet on the skateboard, okay? Keeping your feet on the skateboard. That's also, for me, platform, right? So as soon as I say that, the kids know exactly what I'm talking about. Feet on the skateboard, feet on the skateboard, feet on the skateboard, okay? So as they're going through the drills, I'm giving them coaching points. That's just something I do. I always want to remind them, okay? For me, I'm trying to take all the guesswork, all the guesswork away from my quarterback, okay? I think my brain is bigger than theirs, so I'm trying to, I, I'm gonna think for you, okay? Just so you, because if they can't remember to hit the trigger, block the punch, lift and extend, if they can only remember, if, it's, if I just started working out with them and they can't remember all three of those phases of the sequence, I'm gonna be telling them. Okay, 
Okay, so if they're good at this one, I'm gonna be like, block the punch, lift the stand, block the punch, lift the stand, as they're shuffling through. Okay, so they go, oh, okay, they can hear, they know this one, they already know it hits the trick. Okay? <laughs> Come on back, man. I'm gonna make you a quarterback. <laughs> I'm only gonna do quarterback sneaks, though, that's it. Okay, so we're shuffling through, rhythm, watch this rhythm. Boom, and the ball's out. Okay? We got the in and outs. Again, they, with any quarterback that I work with, we do these same drills, okay? And then I start to make different variations of it, okay? But this is where we start, okay? This is that concrete slab of that house, okay, called quarterback that I want to build, okay? <coughs> Rhythm. Upper body staying quiet. Rhythm with the feet. Seven, oh, and the ball. I'm looking for the rhythm of the feet, keeping their feet active, and I want their upper body to stay quiet. I don't want them bending back and forth. Set their feet, hit the trigger, ball's coming out. Okay? So, real quick questions. We've got about five more minutes. Yes? Good question. Um, you talked about uh, play action. Yes. Do you always show them the ball, or do you sometimes give the empty and you keep the ball here? Even on the lower Absolutely. You always show the ball. Always want to show the ball. Okay? If you want to catch a mouse, do you, you don't put no cheese in the trap? Right? <laughs> but then a mouse would just walk by the trap like, ain't no food there. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> Why would I stop right there? I said, shit. Go in there and get looking and shit. Okay? You get killed for nothing. Ain't no damn food. If I get killed for nothing, I'm still hungry. Right? So, you got to show the cheese. The football is a cheese. Okay? You, hey, like Coach Keaton talked about, okay? It gets one football. Turnover, right? You heard the stat. Hey, their offense had seven turnovers. They lost two state championship games. Okay? It's tackle the man with the ball. Okay? So if the, if the defense doesn't see the ball, okay, they can't bite on the cheese. Okay? So that's why if I'm going bootleg, rollout, whatever, I want to show the ball either with one hand or with two hands. I want to show it. Then once I get to the mesh, okay, the running back's going like this. And I'm doing this, okay? And now they don't know. And now they gotta play their gap and play responsible and do their job. And while they're doing that, while they're thinking like, damn, where's the ball? Their feet are not moving. Because like he said, it's a reaction. They gotta react. Then, oh, there's the ball. Then they can react. But if they don't know where the hell it is, they gotta pound brakes, right? Pound the brakes. They don't know where the ball is, okay? Good deal. You said you had two questions. Yes. Uh, the other one is the last season we had a problem with, uh, with our quarterback and we tried to pull the ball on the zone for some reason. Okay. Because uh, when we turn around, around, as you said, to the A-gap, mm -hmm. um, the inside zone, mm -hmm. he was unstable. He, he had a problem with his feet. And then the second thing, the second problem was um, he was not in the position to outrun the end. Of okay. The yeah. Let me ask you this. Is he fast enough to outrun the end? Okay, all right, good deal. So, <laughs> that's the first thing. If you're fast enough, don't run, don't read. Right. So, the thing about the mesh, <laughs> yeah, the thing about the mesh when the zone read is catch it here, right? Okay, I teach my quarterbacks it's your football, you squeeze it, squeeze it as hard as you need to until you want to let it go. And I tell my running backs, you squeeze the football. Okay, like it's yours, it's not a hard squeeze, but it's a firm squeeze, okay? So both of them are thinking, it's my ball, okay? So as the quarterback's riding, okay? Defensive end contains, quarterback pulls his hands up, and the running back, right, keeps it, okay? Because when it's, when it's not a firm grip on the ball from the quarterback, that's where you get the fumble. <coughs> and, and the running back, you know, go, oh, I thought you were gonna pull it. No, I was trying to get it. Oh, well, I had it, okay? And then you get that confusion between the quarterback and the running back. Okay? So it's both firm. Quarterback has the hand firm on the ball, and the running back has to be firm here. Okay? And so when the quarterback pulls it, he really has to yank it out of there. Okay? Because the running back can go, oh, I get a carry. I'm about to go score a touchdown. And you're like, nope. So you got to pull it. Okay? You really got to pull it out of there. Okay? There's any other questions? 
What do you think? Okay, I mean, we could talk about this, right? So, we're going inside zone. Just say the, the back is here to my right, and he's going inside zone here, okay? So, the proper footwork, and, and like I said, okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of, of what you look like, but when I get my quarterbacks this afternoon, we can really go through it and you can see it, okay? But I have my quarterbacks, and okay, once they catch the ball, again, they got to get off the damn train track. If we're going inside zone here, there's the train tracks. I just want to put the football on the train tracks. So when I catch, it's here. I'm getting out of the way, and I'm extending my arms. I don't want to hit I want the arms fully extended, okay? And then he can ride from his right leg to his left leg, okay? Because the man collapses, boom, I'm pulling. He contains, I'm giving, okay? So that's just something that I teach, okay? But there's other systems where they teach, don't step back here, they teach actually to step forward, turn attention, and step down, and do that, okay? So, the same thing, we're not trying to take a huge step, we just want to get the move, so once we catch, we step, and just like, just like you're throwing, you gotta get your right foot here, to get back to this position, so we can be in a position to ride and pull and all that stuff. So when you catch, you can step down, okay? And just get in that, in that um, platform position, so you can ride here, and have a good base to be able to Move loud. Okay? But again, I will show you this afternoon um, when your quarterback's here. Okay? Yes, sir. How do you throw the pitch? The pitch. Like a toss sweep. Great. Right? That's another thing. A guy's over the top. Okay? So when you're doing a toss sweep, you always, again, when you get the ball from under center, okay, or in gun, yeah, guys do a little bit of gun, you still have to seat the football. Okay? So if I'm going, you guys want to run it, right? I'm going 48 toss. The first thing I got to do, I want to do a punch step. I want to punch with my right foot to the side I'm pitching to. I want to punch here. Punch, seat, and pivot. So when I pivot around, the ball's here. Okay? I pitch with this. It's this way. I don't have the arm swing around like this here with the ball. I always seat the ball, but the first thing I got to punch, seat, pivot, and pitch, okay? And anytime you pitch, I always tell my quarterback to take two steps, okay, towards the running back. Why would, why would I want them to do that? But anybody, answer that question. Why would I want the quarterback to pitch the ball to the running back and take two steps towards him? Yes? Can you move your eyes and uh, see if you bring the ball? Okay, no, yes? Same as the, uh, as the right hand, left is the right Like follow through? Okay, no, not quite, yes? That's it, that's it, okay? If I pitch the ball, okay, I want to take those two steps to make sure he catches it, okay? <coughs> if he doesn't catch it, catch the ball, I'm already going in that direction to get in that fetal baby position to cover it. That is correct, okay? So after he pitches, two steps, okay, he has it, now I can pull my hands back and I can boot out, okay? But you always want to take two steps towards your target to make sure the back has the ball. Good job, perfect. Any other questions? <laughs> you pointing at something or you have a question? I have a question. Oh, okay. I thought you were telling me, hey, break. There's another break. <laughs> What's up? No, uh, just in case you, you, you're practicing, your quarterback can practice, he throws 50, 60, 70, 80 balls, and his elbow gets sore. Mm -hmm. Is that something that depends on the technique or his physical abilities? Technique. If you feel pain in your arm, okay, it's technique, okay? Yeah. It's something he's doing in as far as his delivery, whatever, whatever it may be, okay? It's something, okay? If you feel pain in, in the arm, if the arm has a certain type of pain in the elbow or something like that, that means they're throwing the ball with more arm and not with legs and core, okay? Again, the arm is a delivery of energy. That's all, it just delivers the energy you create and guides the ball where you want to. Okay, so if you have elbow pain, that we call it, say, tennis elbow, yeah. like tennis guys be doing like this here, they have tennis elbow, that's because in tennis, they, if they're off balance or something, they're just going here and not really swinging through. Okay, and that's where you would get the, what we call the tendonitis. I remember this, the same question came up around 20 years ago, and okay. one of these American coaches was telling us to do this. That's what you don't want because you don't have that spasm in your elbow. Okay. So, hard to explain after you coach for 20 years, your quarterback like this, mm -hmm. and 
Now you say, well, this is also not killing your arm. Exactly. So again, if the if the if the target is there, okay, and the extension, so it's not this, and then that. Okay, it's just the extension. Okay? So when we talk about that extended hole drill, we're only at 10 yards. Okay. Okay? I don't want to try to throw 30 yards and really try to bang, snap it there. Then that, yes, that puts stress on the elbow. But we just want to create the muscle memory from 10 yards away to get the arm extended and hold. And then we actually put in the motion there. Okay? Good question. The last one is, uh, would you recommend heavy balls for practice? No. Oh, shit. Oh, that's the other thing I was thinking about. You can buy it. Don't throw the heavy footballs because it puts too much stress on the elbow, okay, and the ligaments in there, okay? So I believe that whoever makes the decision as far as in Germany, as far as footballs, the U17 uh, and down, they should not throw the NFL balls. They shouldn't throw them, okay, because they create bad habits. Because first of all, hands are not big enough, Okay? And so they get the, the elbow underneath the ball and they're more shot putting and that puts more stress on the arm. They should throw high school, high school, high school and college football are the same thing. Okay? So whoever, somebody needs to say, hey, when we're, we're playing with the, with the U13, U15, U17, they should throw college footballs or high school balls. They should not throw the NFL ball because their arm is not developed for that. Okay? That's another thing. So again, just a variation. So you saw uh, Jimmy going through just the three boards, okay? And then when you want to challenge his footwork, okay? And still see if he can process information and still do the movements, okay? So I tell him, the first thing, I'm gonna explain to him what I want. This is important for a coach. Explain to you, explain to your court, uh, person, quarterback, quarterback, okay? What you want, and then you physically have to show him, okay? Whether you do it this slow, you gotta physically show them, okay, what it looks like so they can go, because 90% of the kids these days, they don't hear. They all learn visually. Oh, okay, Coach Calhoun's upper body staying quiet, six feet on the skateboard, okay. They can physically see it. So I'm gonna do it, explain it, do it, okay, and ask them, you got it? Coach, I got it, okay? And then they can run it, they can go through it. Okay, so we're talking about moving six to 12. Rhythm with the feet, rhythm, or snap the ball. Okay, always come to the platform. Always come to the platform, okay? So again, okay, how you get your feet like that? By jump and roll. Jump rope. Jump rope, one more time. <coughs> you can see, hopefully I can stop it. Skateboard. Oh damn. <laughs> Sorry. But I want to make this point though. Because right foot's off the ground. Okay. If you ever stood on the skateboard and pick one foot up, what's the board gonna do? It's gonna tip. Will you be balanced? Nope. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for. So when I say your feet on the skateboard, all he had to do was shuffle an extra couple of steps forward to keep his feet in the ground and then change direction, okay? So these are the things I look for all the time, okay? Okay, to y'all, when I first showed you, you guys probably wouldn't have saw that. Like, shit, great feet, that's good, okay? But I want perfection. I want detail, I want it correct, okay? Just quick um, about some of the questions I got yesterday. A coach asked me yesterday about, he said, um, we have problems with the exchange from the center quarterback. He goes, sometimes we get fumbles or what have you. Okay? In my experience, when quarterbacks, <coughs> when quarterbacks don't ride the center, okay? So they actually, I'll show you guys this way. 
Okay? First, you got to keep the wrist locked. Okay? And as the, when the center is snapping the ball, okay, he's stepping and creating space away from the quarterback. So therefore, the quarterback has to ride okay, to keep the contact on, from the behind to the, to the back of the hand. He has to keep that contact and, to make sure that the mesh is there. Okay? Okay? The other problem I see when, when there's a fumble, the quarterback is coming out too fast. Okay? Did anybody see when Derek Carr broke his finger? Quarterback for the Ravens, he broke his finger. Yeah. Okay? Exactly. Watching the slow mo, he's like, it's set, and he's pulling out. Okay? And now the fingers are like this, and here comes the 300 pound center snapping. Okay? Bring the ball up there at like 25 to 30 miles an hour. Bam! Okay? Have you ever had an NFL center snap? It's, it's powerful. So if your hands are like this, and you got a ball coming, Broke it just like that. Okay? So a couple of coaching points. If you have to ride, okay, even though you're moving, you open it up, you still have to ride. It's just this. That's all the movement. Okay, you don't have to do it like this here, okay? But you have to ride and then you have to stay in. Okay, so as you're riding, you're opening, but you're always trying to keep contact from the back of the hand to the to the crack of the behind. Okay? And that's how you eliminate those uh the uh center exchange uh, 